So this is the original channel ring. It took some time to goof off with the file. So here's, I'm going to put that away. And we're going to update to a slightly different version. Everything's the same variable-wise. Uh, I just changed some of the dimensions. So it looks like this. There's something else showing up that shouldn't be. This function. There we go. So it looks like that. Uh, but the code gets a little messy as you work through it, so a lot of the stuff I'm just going to delete. So it's easier to keep track of as we add more modules uh, for the students to goof off with. And then uh, Mark 2 really doesn't have any value anymore. It's been replaced by Mark 4 with uh, more refined variables with some more options. So we're going to just delete that so we can keep track of everything. It's always good to compile the code and make sure that uh, everything's still there. So now uh, we're going to just suppress this momentarily and write a new module so we can practice for loops. So this is the spike thing. And we're going to have to pass it some variables, but we're going to start off with a simple cylinder uh, where the center equals false and the height is equal to spike height, right? The nice part about this is you get to name your variables, so the algebra makes more sense because you named it what it is. R1 is equal to uh, spike diameter. Go away, cursor. Spike diameter. Meter over 2. And then dollar sign fn equals bases. So that's a variable that we'll pass later. All right, and then close our parenthesis or our curly brace. Then we're going to indent that section. And uh, we need a couple of things here. So number of spikes, we're going to want to call that later. So we're going to just put that variable in now. Number of spikes, uh, spike height, that's with capital H. And then spike diameter and faces. Okay, so those are all the variables we've got so far. And uh, let's leave this at faces equals four, spike diameter can be six, spike height, that can be maybe five, right? And uh, number of spikes, let's let's start with four and see where we're at. Okay, so those variables are just sort of set so the, the function works if someone forgets to put in any input. And let's see, uh, unknown variable spike diameter. Spike diameter. Spike diameter. Spiked diameter. There you go. Extra D. Oh, epic fail for typing. So, there we go. Oh, what's the problem? We didn't call R2, right? We gotta have R2. So R2 is equal to some very small number, like 0.1 over 2, right? And that's gonna make sure that our our spike comes to a point instead of just sort of a rhombus shape. So now uh, we want our spike to be rotated around the z-axis, so we're gonna just rotate it 90 degrees and x, and then zero, and zero and what did I miss? The square bracket. Okay. All right, so we're rotating around the z-axis, which is wonderful. And now we've got to write a for loop. So the for loop is for parenthesis i equals uh, one through number of spikes. Right. Please do whatever function you have below, right? And so a couple of things we're going to need to do. We're going to need to say, um, please rotate about the z-axis, right? So we're only working in z. And it's i. And i could be any letter, right? It's just standard practice to use i and then kind of work your way through the alphabet. So j, k, l, m, n, o, p, et cetera, et cetera. So 360 degrees. Rotate number of spikes times around 360 degrees over number 
of spikes. And that's just to ensure that our spikes are evenly spaced. Okay. And uh, we need a square bracket. And then sometimes there'll be plus some number here. So uh, we're going to say zero for now. But if you want to rotate the spikes a little bit, it comes in helpful. So. And now there's a parser error because in the for loop, I did not close the curly brace. And we're missing a square bracket right there. Boom. Okay, so this looks like a cute little star. That's because we need to translate it. So uh, translate uh, let's see. Right now it looks like we're working in the x-axis. So let's let's start there and translate it ring size because we'll be using that variable later, which means we need some sort of variable here that says uh, ring size. Ring size. And I think the last one that worked was like 20. That was fine. Okay, so now, oh, okay, we got two problems. Uh, problem number one, this needs to be ring size over two because it's a diameter. Excellent. And then apparently we need to rotate about the y-axis so that all of our spikes are pointing outward. That is much better. Okay, cool. So now that we know our module works, let's just pass some numbers here. So number of spikes, let's go with eight. And spike height can be six, and spike diameter can be five, and the ring size can be 22, and the faces can be uh, three, maybe. Cool. And we're gonna take that Copy it, take that out, and then bring it over to this function here. That way, there we go. We've got our band ring, and we're going to just drop in a union function here, just because union. Let's see. And we should really put that in set, there we go, and then close our curly brace, and we got all sorts of spikes on the ring, and you can see where the gemstone is, that's a bit of a problem, so there's a couple of ways around that, you can go into your function here, and just change that number to, oh, let's see, 360 degrees divided by 8, so like 22 and a half. And then the spikes just mix, miss your central cone. Or you can do something else and leave it where it is and go into the for loop. And this is actually easier if you look from the top. And we're going to just pull one number out. And so you can see that we're missing a spike to the right. And so then you could just rotate this uh, maybe 45 degrees. And now you have the same function where your gemstone is untouched, your spikes are still present, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this will not 3D print though, so we're going to change some of the dimensions here so that our spike height is maybe uh, 3. Yep. And our diameter, that seems okay. And we want to make sure that our, our ring is embedded. I don't know, I kind of like the idea of hexagonal spikes. That's kind of a fun thing. So there you go. That's that's how to how to incorporate a for loop. And I'm, I'm feeling kind of fancy, so I'm going to goof off with this a little bit and uh, figure out how to offset the division here. So uh, maybe 30 degrees? Negative 30 degrees? Nope. Oh, yeah. 15? No, no, no. Negative 15? I'm going further away. 45? Positive 45. Getting closer. Looks like 60. There we go. 
So there's your simple design. And yeah, goof off as much as you want. Okay. But uh, that's how you do a for loop and how you sort of figure out where you are in space. And uh, that's it.